standing by on line 10 right now. Okay, well, either one. We'll get them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got them right here, right now. Uh, Hello, Dave. Hi. Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Ray, that's, a, that's an old text there. She, Amanda's re- referring to. <laughs> oh. I, I was traveling, uh, and then off and on, the wind is very strong, so, and I got up to count now, so I got all the bars necessary, but usually you get it a lot faster and uh, much more stronger, uh, but the wind is pretty strong, so thank God Cowboy found me, I'll tell you that. Thank okay. Cowboy. All okay, right. let's do some work here now. Okay. Uh, just an update for all of our citizens. I had a very, very good meeting uh, uh, along with my team, uh, and we met with the archbishops, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, Archbishop Pazan, Archbishop Smith, uh, Archbishop Gagnon. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I, all I can tell you is that we're working very hard. We've been going on this now going to two years uh, on a uh, meeting with, the, of course, His Holiness uh, uh, to meet with the Pope in Rome. Ooh. And so we had to cancel everything last year due to COVID. Uh, but now we're working on finalizing uh, the date uh, and time. Uh, it's expected we're going to be meeting with the Pope in November. And so I, of course, I expressed clearly what my message will be uh, on behalf of the Métis people and, uh, and, and definitely on behalf of all the Métis and all the Catholics out there that are strong in the context of, of uh, believing, of course, in God and, and expressing our positions on, on some of the horrendous things we heard about. Uh, of course, we... We know what happened in residential school. We have, we know what uh, took place there. Uh, it didn't stop there either. It happened in the 60s scoop, uh, not from, from the church, but it happened from the provincial government and where they stole our children in, uh, in the 1960s and, and gave away thousands of our kids to the United States and other places uh, in Canada and the world. So but it's been a challenging time for Indigenous people when you go back and reflect the ministry. And so uh, the bishops are working diligently right now in a team approach. Uh, to set the time of, of the meeting. So uh, the meeting will take place with just uh, the Métis Nation, uh, our citizens, and there'll be eight that will be present uh, that will meet directly, privately with the, with the Pope. And, of course, we're taking a delegation, and they'll be meeting, and, and the Pope will come out to bless everyone uh, that will be there. So it's uh, uh, my plan, and just for our citizens that's hearing, uh, is, is clearly to push the Pope to come to Canada and to come and apologize on behalf of the Catholic Church to what it did to Indigenous people as a whole. Uh, we know that First Nations suffered uh, much greater than we did, uh, but the suffering is still suffering no matter how you look at it. They had larger numbers uh, uh, that were placed in full-fledged uh, day schools uh, that stayed and lived in there. Ours were forced to go home on a daily basis. doesn't mean abuse didn't happen. But there also is full-fledged uh, day schools, uh, right? Uh, for example, High Cross uh, actually was a full-fledged res- run residential school. Uh, our national president actually uh, stayed there for eight years. And yeah. uh, so it, it, it's, it's been a challenge. And then there's the day school issue. Now, people are asking questions, how about the day school? Uh, there's a, we understand there's a settlement happening for day school. Well, again, uh, that, that those cases that you hear so much about are, are driven by First Nation agenda. So, so again, I, I'm proud of their achievements. I, I commend them. Uh, but I actually make it very clear to Canada, uh, the issue of day school for our citizens needs yet to be dealt with. So in following with that statement, I actually met uh, with uh, Minister Bennett uh, yesterday. Again, I want to thank my team, Al and April, and the rest of them who are organizing these things. Uh, but it, it, it went very well. Uh, Bennett, uh, I raised the matter with her, indicating, yes, you know, I'm very proud the government has come to a, a position where they don't have to go to court and hopefully deal with these matters. Uh, that now the court settled, and then hopefully some compensation and some uh, further work will be taking place to deal with the people that have suffered, whether uh, if it's uh, as, as far-reaching as uh, the sexual to to actually even murder, in my view, and as you know, you're finding all these bodies uh, of children, but also the culture genocide that took place. So there's a lot that happened, and, and uh, so we had a good discussion with Minister and I, and we actually started negotiating towards a Métis uh, uh, a nation settlement. Uh, and uh, before that case hit the court, and everything had to be put on hold because they're not allowed to negotiate uh, while there's a court case going on. So that held us back, and I reminded the, the uh, minister. Uh, we already have our lawyers uh, based out of Toronto. And they're a very big firm, very very well-recognized uh, firm, and uh, we hope uh, that lessons have already been learned 
that uh, these cases will be won in courts. It may take us years to get through it, but why should we su- have the people suffer even longer? Uh, there's enough damage and it's time to get to a settlement now. So I indicated I want to get back uh, towards a settlement and a negotiation uh, so we can uh, speed up the process and get it done for the Métis citizens who have suffered the consequences of residential, including what is called day school. And the reason for people ask themselves, why do they call it day school? Well, what you're saying is that when the children stayed in residential school at long periods of time, didn't go home, that they were under the jurisdiction of, of the church-run uh, uh, school, but funded by Canada. When you were in day school, they're saying, well, that's provincial jurisdiction, not federal jurisdiction. So that's the whole issue when people ask the question, why Why are they, those getting settlements and we're not? Yet some of us did get abused. Yeah. So it's because the, consider, the phrase is day school versus when you live and stay in a residential school. So the meeting with Bennett went very well. And so I, I want to again express uh, to my team, uh, we actually are finalized a, a document uh, to its to its st- first stage, we'll call it, uh, the self-government document. It's now being translated in French. Uh, it will be coming out in uh, anticipation. We're trying to gear for the 21st on Indigenous Day. We still might, but I doubt we will because it has to go through a process, And but it's already approved internally by the minister and myself, and it actually will now categorize the MMF as the self-government of the people. So they will recognize and treat us as a government, like a provincial government. Wow. Uh, so that's a big, big undertaking. You know, you hear of Saskatchewan, people say, well, I heard Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Ontario are talking that they have a, something called tri-council, which they have self-government. That is not true. They have something which is called, they assert, which means they themselves as the provinces, meaning Alberta and Saskatchewan, Métis, they say we have self-government. But Canada has a clause in there that says, well, we don't recognize you have it until you get legislation. So, so that could be years away. Mm-hmm. Not could it will be years away. They got to change their constitutions. They got to do all kind of all kind of different things that happen. We will not have to do that. Uh, in fact, our negotiations are very clear. Our assemblies have been our guiding principles in our power, our regions, our locals. Our constitutions guide us with wisdom since 1967, and clearly that is going to be a standing constitution, and that we don't have to change it. But every other province has to change theirs. Uh, so it, it just shows how far advance we are in our negotiation versus them. And as soon as the minister puts her pen of ink on that paper and I put mine, uh, it's automatic that they consider and not consider, recognize the MMF is the government of the Métis people in Manitoba. So that is a powerful, powerful document, right? Oh, yes. Uh, it also has a bunch of other stuff. We're talking about taxation. Uh, we're going to negotiate taxation with uh, Canada. And what's another part of it that's moving forward now it's, it's moving to the next phase, which is going to be a treaty. It'll be a treaty with Canada. And that, again, is, is already being worked on right now as we speak. And so this document that I'm about to sign probably soon with Cabinet, and, and I can't wait to come to the Assembly in, in the fall, and by the time of COVID's been kind of controlled. But just to show the people how far in advance we are as the strongest making government in the prairies and definitely the most advanced in the prairies. So... So again, it just shows that uh, we have a very solid team at the Métis government, and we have our locals have done great justice to us, our regions, and our, and our cabinet. So I'm very, very proud of that. I also talked to her about the 60 scoop. I know that I raised that earlier in my comments during during the uh, update on the uh, meetings with the Pope. Um, in 60 scoop, I raised the whole issue again. Uh, we need to move towards a settlement on the 60 scoop as we should on the day school, and we need to move on that as quickly as we can because we. I uh, uh, really did work towards this negotiation, and it should have taken place without that court for, uh, action being filed. Uh, so the government indicating that they want to sit down and come back to us to the table to start working with us on uh, dealing with the 60 scoop. So, so those are two big agendas that, that we're working on there. And trust me, there's a lot, a lot of work in there, a lot of legal, a lot of uh, policy issues, and, and we're pushing that. At the same time, we're pushing child welfare legislation, as you know that the. Uh, uh, although we have mandated agencies uh, already in our province, we will have a direct uh, legislated child welfare with federal Canada, uh, which will be more powerful than the situation we're finding ourselves under the province right now. So that is underway. And we're also negotiating health, health legislation right now, Ray. And that's, uh, that's a big issue for, of course, a lot of our citizens. And I anticipate that uh, we had a good meeting already with Minister Miller on that issue. 
so we're going to start working on the template about uh, the what what will be covered by Canada uh, dealing with the Métis people. As you know, we give free prescriptions right now to our, our elders, 55 and up, but that's our own program. So Canada has an obligation now, under the, after the Daniels case, we were in the Supreme Court of Canada, we have an obligation to deal with our citizens and to short, definitely treat us in a fair and equitable manner. So we do know that in the ELT legislation, there will be programs, there will be benefits that will be coming to Métis in Manitoba. So I know a lot of people have been really worried about that. They want that done. So I want to assure the people it's on our agenda, and we began negotiating already. So uh, one of the um, next meetings I had, Ray, was with the farmers and ranchers. Mm-hmm. Uh, there I, had, I was quite uh, uh, concerned on so much of the Métis farmers and ranchers that are so uh, uh, angry right now with the Palliser government, uh, actually dri- driving them to bankruptcy. Uh, these poor guys have been you know, passed on from family to family farm and uh, working and working and working to make a living scratching uh, all they can from the field that they're in. And, of course, they do a lot of lease crown lands for hay to feed their cattle or to uh, extend their services. But in 2011, the flood did a lot of damage to many, and that land is just finally recouping. But what the government did to them, what Talister did to them, is they actually went and tripled the cost of leased land. What? So I'll give an example. So uh, one ranch we do know has, uh, he was paying 20000 in leased land, he was getting 6,500 bales of hay, which is square bales, and uh, to feed his cattle. They raised it in two and a half years to 60000 What? Actually, $60,000. So he said, there's no way I can survive. I will have to go into bankruptcy, and no bank's going to give me a loan, because now they change it to 15-year lease. Oh, my and, God. And then, so I have no asset value now. So the banks will be turning us down, and we'll have nowhere to go. He said, we're going to go into bankruptcy. So a lot, of, And that's a bigger rancher. The smaller ranchers are, are even getting it hit twice as hard in the context of their financial uh, uh, accountability with banks. Uh, so they're really, really hurting. They're quite afraid. Uh, and we had a very good meeting. We did issue every farmer and rancher $10,000 uh, uh, several months ago uh, to assist them during this tough time of COVID. I announced that we will be giving them another $10,000 as NMF government to keep them going uh, through this tough time to buy their A or because there's no way to get afford that lease land. And it's designed in a way, Ray, and you heard this happening right now with parks already. They're starting to privatize parks, and they're trying to dance around that they're not doing it. Uh, but this is the same thing they're doing with the lease land for farmers. Uh, if you don't, you have five days to get pay your bill when you receive it in the mail. If you don't pay it, then you're in default, and then your lease land is automatically lost, and then you can't even bid for it because you were in default because you had five days to pay your, your lease uh, debt. So it is very hard for them right now and a lot of them are quite afraid and very very angry and i can't blame them so we're actually working with them right now to figure out a strategy uh they're actually talking about they want to go to court uh, they want to sue the government uh because it's going to bank up all of them mm-hmm. and so we're we had lawyers at the meeting so we are looking at that right now these are turning fourth generation farmers and so they're 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 at a point in time with uh, everything that their dad worked for their grandpa worked for is going to be potentially lost so so it, it is something quite scary for many of them, and, and I, you can see the pain and, and their voices. Uh, I hear the pain in their voices, and you see the pain in their faces on Zoom. Uh, so our government's going to do everything we can uh, to help them in any way uh, possible. So also don't forget, on June 6th uh, was the uh, uh, 77th anniversary of D-Day, and uh, uh, again, we can't, uh, we, we got a member of 150,000 soldiers and uh, died at that time, 14,000 soldiers, uh, so composed of hundreds of Métis people that went overseas to fight uh, in Juno and, and other mm. places. So a lot of them have passed on to so the 77th anniversary of place. So again, I want to express uh, my gratitude to all those families that, rem- that can talk about their grandpa or grandma that joined the military and were out there. Actually, our military, our program, the Métis Veteran Legacy Program, is going very well. We have appointed our commissioners, and now we'll, we'll start to issue out the, uh, $1.5 million, and, and people can apply for programs uh, to remember uh, the Second World War Committee veterans and other aspects of opportunity that comes with the program. So I think Glory and the rest of her team on that one are working very hard to make that happen. So uh, now we got some birthdays. I've got happy birthday going out to Janice Sleepinac. That's Graydon's, uh, Ralph and my nephew, of course. Now he fell in love. Uh, so he's uh, actually wants to say, uh, 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 u
my person sitting beside me trying to remind me of something else, interfering while I'm doing something on the phone. Anyways, Santa's <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, and a happy birthday going out to Wendy Pronto, who's celebrating her birthday on Monday, June 14th. And happy birthday to Shannon Lard, director of the Making Justice Institute, who was celebrating her birthday Wednesday, June 16th. So big happy birthday to all of them. And I had a great opportunity, Ray, uh, coming home. Of course, everybody knows I'm coming home for a, to put my sister to rest. And uh, her funeral is taking place Sunday. We're having a wake in Dauphin. It'll be a private viewing uh, for people to, to come and visit for a couple hours. And then we have service at 7. And uh, and then we're also, it's going to be on Facebook or something that, or Zoom, whatever, that the uh, uh, the funeral home is using. So people can actually go into sneak funeral home and they'll be able to find the details for Sunday evening that will be taking place. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing as many friends say goodbye to, to my sister. That uh, She had many different friends all over the place. And I want to make sure that uh, our family, I'll be doing a eulogy there. Then on Sunday, on Monday, so we have the church service in Back Bay. I tend to, again, uh, two, I think, is viewing. Uh, people want to come in and, and view whether we're going to follow COVID rules on both seats and there. Uh, we all also remember that Delta virus is now in Manitoba. So people ask themselves the question, Delta virus is here. It's from India, and it's spreading uh, all over Ontario. It's hit Manitoba now, and it's more deadly than the, city, the present virus that we got, the first COVID-19. It's the same virus, but it's going stronger. Mm-hmm. And so it is out there. And I know people out there, some people don't listen uh, to that. In fact, I stopped on the highway there in that day, talked to Gary Campbell, and he was all happy. He got his uh, second shot, and he said that he's, he's quite concerned that some of the people he heard about are not taking this or not believing it. And he said, this is serious. You know, uh, he's a fisherman, but he knows clearly that this is a serious issue. Uh, and so is so many. Brian Thompson is telling you the same thing. You know, I got my shot, and, and I... And I still have to worry. I got grandkids to protect. He said, you know, so I got to make sure, even though I got my second shot, I still got to be cautious until the government tells me we're in a better, or, the, or science tells me we're in a better position as doctors would tell us. So, again, there's people out there, if you're listening, you're thinking about whether you should take the shot, take the shot. Trust me. Uh, I've been here in prison for 22 years. I've never misled you. I never took me down any path that's wrong. And at the end of the day, I'm telling you right now, this vaccine, you need it. You need it to help you. Uh, save lives. If you don't want to save your own, you will have to save others. And that's part of our culture, part of who we are. We always take care of our elders, and we got to make sure that we don't allow anyone uh, to uh, to uh, get uh, sick. So, but I, my great grandson Ray, I had him in my arms. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, uh, he's stolen my heart now already. So I think that's going to be one that's going to cost me a fortune. That's right. So, uh, <laughs> he's a great grandson. So my first great grandson, I had him in my arms. His name is Isaiah. I was so proud to hold him there, look at him, and he was making all kinds of little sounds to me. And uh, so he's got my heart now. So I got to start planning, I guess, uh, money for him for the future. I got to start putting 50 bucks every check. (laughs) And and people ask yourself, $50 every check doesn't sound like much? Well, let me tell you, when my first grandson was born trading, I started off putting $50 every check. So he's now uh, 18, Mm -hmm. and he's got in his account, and I won't let him touch it, He's got about nearly thirty thousand dollars in this account. Wow, fifty dollars every check. I never miss it in my paychecks. I take out fifty dollars, put it in a private account of his, and it's grown to thirty thousand dollars. Wow! Can you do that for me, please? No, <laughs> hey, that's eighteen years. <laughs> I have fifty dollars every so it's fifty dollars every two weeks. So, <laughs> but but you just you know people don't realize how fast that thing can grow. Yeah, so, for sure. But he said, you know, I'm going to buy a truck. I said, no, you're not. I said that money is to give you a head start in life and. Uh, Maybe you'll put a down payment on a house, so you're going to buy a used truck, but your surgeon is not going to spend that money and go buy a new truck. I said that money's to give you the head start. Anyway, that's that's my private things. But just showing you that, you know, you got to start planning for the future for your grandkids, and that's exactly what I'll be doing. Me and Gloria already are talking about it, and uh, she was touched by our great-grandson and held him tight in her arms. So, again, Ray, uh, thank you very much, uh, Cowboy, for finding me. Thank you, Ray. All right. Uh, and my condolences is also going out to Jerry Swain, who was late to rest on Friday, June 11th. Uh, so... And to all those others, uh, Ray, I was just stopped in the graveyard in Duck Bay. A lot of fresh graves. Of course, Johnny Pronto is, uh, is still fresh. He died of COVID. Uh, and there's uh, a couple, a few more already. And there's about two more following our suit. Uh, condolences with Ellen Bushy. And, and I t- expressed that to Julian. Uh, he stayed like Nancy with his mom throughout. And I expressed that his mom will always be with him. 
and there are signs everywhere in Pine Creek. There's an election going on. Ray, you wouldn't believe the amount of signs. I was quite impressed. Sign after sign, candidate after candidate. There are so many people running for chief, so many people running for council. And I tell people, if you want to listen to young people, young politicians coming, I listen to Harley Chartrand's video. And I, he's not my cousin or anything, but I listen to his video. He's, uh, of course, Treaty uh, on Pine Creek Reserve. But man, can he speak. So when mm. you start looking at these young generations coming out, I think you got some good leaders coming out there and very uh, well-spoken leaders. And I look forward to seeing them uh, as they carry the torch and they move forward. So, again, to everybody, to all our elders, thank you very much uh, for doing whatever you always do. And elders, if you do not understand the COVID, get a hold of us and we'll get somebody to explain it to you. And even myself, if you need me to talk to you, I'll explain it to you. And for the call in for the, for the, for the uh, golf course, Charlene out in uh, Centre we are. They, we have to put new water lines. Uh, they're leaking everywhere, in the, uh, and we're almost finished our, our, our clubhouse. It should be open in, I think, in a month and a half. We are not sure we're going to open the uh, golf course this year, but I'm telling you, the following year, it's going to be open and stay open throughout after that for sure. We're putting new water lines, new pumps, uh, to make sure that when we do our watering system, uh, it's intact and in place. And, of course, COVID has stopped a lot of the golf courses from really truly opening properly. So, but again, uh, I apologize to all those golfers that use that golf course. But I'm telling you, you're going to have a beautiful clubhouse. You're going to have one hell of a beautiful uh, golf course there when we're when we're done with it. So, uh, this year may not be the year, but I guarantee you, next year it should be looking like a pretty go- golf course as you see on TV. So, take care, everybody. And I'll see you guys uh, uh, next Saturday. And thank you again to everybody listening to Meet the Hour and to our young people. Be brave, be strong, and believe in yourself. Believe in AT. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Raven. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, drive safely. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. David Chartrand, the president of the Manitoba Métis Federation, with his weekly report, Métis Matters.